This week on ESPN Scholastic Sports America, they play football on the old landing strip at this Kansas high school. It used to be an Atlas missile launch complex. When you go down to the tunnel for the first time and you know there was a, an, an actual missile ready to be fired, um, it's just kind of a weird feeling when you walk down there. It's kind of an uneasy feeling. It took well, it's a windy day here in Holton, Kansas, but that's okay because they're welcoming us and we want to welcome you to another edition of ESPN Scholastic Sports America. And I'll tell you what, they've got a high school here you're not going to believe. ESPN presents the youth of America doing their best on Scholastic Sports America. ESPN Scholastic Sports America is brought to you by McDonald's. You know the one. It's McDonald's for food, folks, and fun. And by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Stand down the missile. This has only been a test. But 25 years ago, the tests were for real at Missile Complex Number 9, which is now Jackson Heights High School in Kansas. You know, I was kind of uneasy for the first couple of weeks here. I really was. I've never told that any, to anybody before, but ESPN, I guess. Dave Henry is the head football coach at Jackson Heights, probably the only school in the world built from an old nuclear missile site. It all began back in the late 50s and early 60s when the Air Force built nine Atlas nuclear missile bases within a 60-mile radius of Holton. But by the time they were completed, they were deemed obsolete, and the Air Force issued orders to shut them down. About that same time, the state was looking for a site to build a new high school for the tiny towns of Soldier, Circleville, Netawaka, and Whiting. And guess what? Missile complex number nine was right smack in the middle. And so, the two parties reached a deal. The school district paid $1 for the 27-acre site and everything on it. Three years and $635,000 more dollars later, Jackson Heights opened its doors. Now, to somebody who doesn't know the history of Jackson Heights, it probably looks just like any other high school. From the outside, 25 feet above ground. But here on the inside, 25 feet underground, well, this is one of the daily reminders that links Jackson Heights to its past. It's called, rather appropriately, the tunnel. I think it's a feature of the school that probably is the most talked about feature. In other words, if you were to interview students who had graduated, I think one thing they would talk about would be the tunnel. Originally, this was a tunnel used by the uh, personnel that were stationed here when it was a missile base uh, so that they could uh, go from, from uh, the missile section over to the living quarters and uh, I suppose uh, for a safety feature in case of a fine or a misfiring or something they would be protected. Uh, now that, that doesn't mean that wasn't a firing signal was it? Uh, no that was the bell. Oh. <laughs> the buzzer for changing classes. <laughs> Just scared me a little bit. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna go off. <laughs> The school managed to use just about everything the Air Force left behind, including its airstrip, which now launches Friday night football games. Blast, blast, Special Charlie, Special Charlie Blast. But according to a few of the students, there are still a few nooks and crannies waiting to be found. There's some rumor about some room up by, somewhere by the music room that there's supposed to be a refrigerator and a jukebox and everything up there, but I don't know exactly where it's at. I haven't found it yet, but. Hopefully, by the end of the year, I'll find it. But. We realize that they have places uh, around corners and uh, up above and so forth where they might hide from time to time, and they might know about some places that I don't know about. But hopefully, in 21 years, I've found them all. There is one person who knows this place better than any, Tony Basil. Tony grew up on the land that was destined to be Missile Complex Number 9 and then Jackson Heights. He helped build and then guard the missile base, and now he helps keep the school clean. Tony remembers it all. Okay, now this is the this is the actual original entrance this into the is site. The original entrance and the only entrance to, to get into this missile site when it was in operation. And this is 
Holy cats, this is solid See, steel? It, had, it also had double doors. We cut one of them off up there. It had two of these big steel doors, and of course you had latched it, latched it shut, and then you went in through this little tunnel and then down into the site. How big around was the missile? Oh, I mean, was it was it almost the the diameter of this? Not quite. No, it was about half that big. About half as big as this room is wide. But when it when it went up through that ceiling, you could see it out on the oh, on yeah, 75. Oh yeah, you could see it from the highway. You sure definitely could. And when they filled it up, why well, it was set there in smoke, just like frost coming off of it. A few other lifelong residents remember the missile too. Barbara Tanking worked on site for the defense contractors. It was gigantic. I'd never seen, you know, you've seen pictures and on t TV and in newspapers, but uh, it was a beautiful sight. It really was. I was there on a Saturday the first time that uh, they actually went through the procedure that, that they'd have gone through to fire the missile. They loaded it, and I had one job. I had a telephone number, and if anything went wrong, I was to call. I don't know where that would have connected me to, but, you know, it would have been an emergency situation. It's amazing, you know, we see the kids come in and out of class, and they really don't realize what this all used to be about. <laughs> right. <laughs> if they would have been down in here when the missile base was here, before we knocked this top off and all that, why well, they would have wondered if they were going to get out. Because I'm telling you, when it lights go out down here, it is dark. You can't see nothing. <laughs> and this all, is the boiler room that's in here? This is the boiler room, and all our electrical panels are in here, and some of those are actually come from the military. Some of these are original. They're original. All right. Now, which which panels are the original pan This These all, panels? All that big panel board that you see there is all from the military. We just kind of rebuild them and put them together, and, and that's what furnishes our electric for the whole building. Now, you guys didn't get a bad deal. You got the electrical, you got the land, you got everything that's been existing for how much? For one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. No, it isn't. And so it is that a one-time launching pad for a nuclear missile is now the pride of Jackson County. And folks around here want the whole world to know it. Well, we hope that uh, uh, Russia and other foreign countries are aware of the fact that this is not a missile base anymore, and we hope that on their map they have it listed as Jackson Heights High School and not an old Latinist missile base. Do you have like, you know, President Bush has got like a red line, a hot line, straight over to the Soviet Union. You guys have one of those here? <laughs> the only red line we have is from the principal's office to my office, <laughs> across the street. <laughs> not across the That's ocean. That's in case of a, 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 a big emergency over here. But not missile alert. No, not a missile alert. Student alert. <laughs> All right, let me see. I gotta write the Kremlin, let them know that this really is a high school, that now this... Now hear this, now hear this. Cobra Command is on full alert. What? This is what? not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. What? Airman Debenham, uh, the command headquarters. Uh, that sounds like I gotta go, okay? Listen, you stick around. Our Super 10 football pull is next, and then when we come back, assuming we're still around, we'll have the story of a Minnesota football team that's changed losing into winning by changing their lives. All right, I gotta go.